waning days of summer, there was a quiet, confident buzz in the air on the Penn State campus. Football season was around the corner, and there was a feeling that something was slightly different about the 94 Nittany Lions. A sense that maybe this team had something special. They had talent, they had leaders, and they had learned how to win. But did they have what it takes to get to the next level? Did they have what it takes to have a championship season? what it takes to be a great team. The degree of commitment, the amount one has to give of oneself, is unknown. One of the few men who does know is Joe Paterno. Each day after their come from behind Citrus Bowl victory over Tennessee, Joe and his Nittany Lions went to work. For eight months, the Lions dedicated themselves to a series of goals as they entered the Metrodome in Minnesota, anxious to find out what kind of team they were. The opening coin toss put the ball in the hands of the Lions first. And finally, after all the preparation, Joe could show off some of the talent he had. Kerry Collins, in his fifth year, was set to lead the offense that returned the majority of last year's starters, including Kijana Carter. Today would be his day, as offensive coordinator Fran Ganner repeatedly called his number. Kijana did the honors, and Penn State's chase for the Big Ten title had begun. The defense also started the season with a bang. Terry Killen's fumble recovery gave the ball back to Carter. Just one of the Lions' offensive threats. We do have a lot of offensive weapons when you think about it. You know, if they try to stop our run like they did today, we got them with the pass, and then when they soften up, you know, our offensive line and the backs start running the ball. So I, I think if we had the mental frame of doing get better every week, it's going to be pretty hard to try to stop our offense. The coaching staff then revealed the first glimpse of an explosive passing attack. The Lions' balanced play calling kept Minnesota from knowing what to expect next. There's a gift to Carter. He breaks to the right. He's at the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. He may go the distance. They'll not catch Kajana Carter. Penn State touchdown. Surrounded by a wealth of talent, Collins picked up where he left off from last season, repeatedly marching his team down the field. This time, hooking up with one of his favorite targets, Bobby Ingram. Fake to Whitman, throw over the middle, caught by Ingram, touchdown, what a grab! The Gophers were unable to stop the Lions on either side of the ball, and Jim Wacker's team felt the brunt of the Lions' blow. Even with the starters done for the day, the Lions continued to excite their fans. A give to Mike Archie up the middle, the 10, the 5. What a move! Touchdown, Penn State! Oh, my! Yes, oh, my! Just how good were the Nittany Lions? How different is your running game from what they tried to do? For cameras 1, 2, and 3, we'll begin with run telestrator framing. Need a pair, who's got them? Back home in State College, the word was out on the Penn State potential. The cameras, the media, the hype. USC was in town, and the resurgence of the Trojan offense made them Sports Illustrated's glamour boys. 
Southern Cal was a chance to showcase themselves in front of a national television audience against a top-ranked opponent. A picture-perfect day in one of college football's greatest stadiums. The standing room only home crowd of over 96,000 Nittany Lion fans got their first look in person at the nation's most exciting offense. He's at the 30, he's at the outside, at the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, Penn State touchdown! USC also marked the return of the defense's leader, linebacker Brian Gelsheiser. Fumble on the snap, and Penn State has recovered! You know, you can relax a little bit more because you know he's going to be, he's going to take care of his assignments. And when, when he's supposed to do something, when it comes in this play, he's in his hole, if he's supposed to make the tackle, he'll make it. So it takes a little pressure off the other guys because he's a great leader and he always does what he's supposed to do. The marquee quarterback was supposed to be wearing visiting white, but it was Kerry Collins who stole the national spotlight. Especially with the emergence of big time prep number 31. Freddie Scott, the perfect compliment to Bobby Ingram. I think teams are, are trying to roll their coverages towards Bob, Bobby's side to try to uh, get him out of the game because he is a great wide receiver. And when they start doing that, that does free up me and uh, the tight end and running backs more. They pitch wide to uh, Kajana Carter, trying to get to the corner. He dies, he's at the 45, he's at the 50, he's at the 45, out of bounds at the USC 37 yard line. The Lions went right at the Trojans with hard hitting, no nonsense football. It was the kind of football USC's John Robinson was all too familiar with from Penn State. But still, Robinson and the crowd were shocked as the Lions rolled up a 35 to nothing halftime lead. I think that we were young last year at this stage. You know, the passing game wasn't established. It was Kerry Collins' first season really having a job. Uh, nobody had heard of me and other receivers, so, you know, we just had to take some time to get adjusted. And USC had a, a great defensive backfield last year, and they, they took us out of the game, and they did some things that, that now we can recognize since we're old and we've been there that we can adjust to better. And Johnson is straight back to pass, and he's knocked over with the man coming up the middle, Willie Smith, and he had help. Penn State defenses have never been kind to Heisman winners and candidate Rob Johnson was no exception. Johnson is back to pass once again, looking, steps up into the pocket, he's down, and he's got him. And in the waning seconds, his pride-instilled second team kept up the pressure, relentless through the very last play. He's back to pass, and he's a little slow on the take-up, he's pointing, directing traffic, no rush, no rush. Running to the outside, running to the outside, sack by Steele, and the ball game is over. I'm never comfortable with those kind of football games because you get ahead so quickly and, and there's so much of the football game to play. And it's you, you're really over there just trying to get kids not to let up. You're yelling, don't let up, don't let up, don't let up. And boy, that's a heck of a way to coach a football game. The Lions had already begun to show signs of maturity. Above all the physical talent that was apparent on the field, there was a deep desire to get better. A work ethic that few teams have. Yet Joe was still cautious. With his starters playing only little more than half of the first two games, Joe worried about their conditioning. I know I'm, when I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but I, I won't hurt to say it one more time. Whatever we do, we've got, we can't forget that this team has got to, can, it can't, and it has to improve. Uh, physical condition, again, I hope you guys will keep an eye on that because, again, we missed tackles in the second half that, I, to me, looked like we, would, we did not have the acceleration to the ball carry. I know we all appreciate how hard they're working and what good kids they are. But we, you know, we still know, have to make the plays. I mean, well, but I mean, we still have to be, hey, 
You yeah. have to really drive them, and I don't, you know, I don't mind we talk here once in a while about, hey, we're working hard, or you can't do this, can't, we got to be careful. That's fine, but I don't want that to, to get to be where we're, you know, we go like out there, and because it's been a tough practice, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're thinking, well, it's been a real tough practice, and then a couple of things we let go by. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not, you know, it isn't all out. The back doesn't run 20. I'm looking at Kranz. Why'd you say the back doesn't go? We're not out there yelling pass and run. And we're not doing all the little things because it, it you know, we, if we start thinking they're working too hard, you know, you know what I'm saying. Joe pushed his team and they responded. Once the clock started, it took only moments for Hayden Fry and his Hawkeyes to see what kind of shape they were in. Here's a high kick that Mike Archie's going to take at the 5. He's at the hash mark right, goes right up the hash mark. He's at the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, outside to the 30, 40. He's at the 45, out of bounds! Fans had an opportunity to see the diversity of the Lions' arsenal. John Whitman's smash mouth running style set up the quick cutting Mike Archie. Yeah, I think Kazan had an equipment problem, I think. And um, they called me to go in, and uh, as soon as I got in, they called to the play. And I think they were in 2 deep, and uh, safety was on me man to man. Mike Archie's in the slot. Back to pass goes Curry Collins. First pass of the game. He's got Archie in the end zone. Yes, touchdown! I mean, he threw a perfect ball. I mean, he just, I told him to give me enough space. You know, and he did give me enough space, so I, just, I had to lay out. Unfortunately, I came out with it. Each time Kajana Carter went out, Mike Archie came in. And each time Archie touched the ball, he put on an all-purpose clinic for the fans. The Iowa offense stood little chance against the swarming blue and white D. And soon enough, Sandusky's troops were into the scoring action. Great rush, block! Penn State has it. Who's going to pick it up? Into the end zone, picked up. Let's what it, call it what it is. Touchdown, Penn State! Paterno calmly looked on as the Lions put together a near-perfect display of football. Blocking, catching, running, and kicking while controlling the tempo of the game. He fakes the pitch, a look back pass is intercepted by Tony Pittman coming to the near side trying to get outside. The offensive potential Fran Ganner saw was unlimited. And so was the amount of determination this team possessed. Linemen who blocked 30 yards downfield and plowed gaping holes for the best combination of running backs in the country. And they go to Archie. Archie has the corner. He's on his feet. Into the end zone. Touchdown. He broke two tackles on the way. The crowd fed off the offense's success, and the defense fed off the crowd's energy. Facing a first and goal from the one-yard line, they dug in determined not to allow the Hawkeyes in the end zone. Looking, he's got the man in the end zone, but he wants to run for it, and it's knocked away by Brian Miller. There it is, a fake, and base is knocked down at the 21. Brian Miller, Brian, the ball was first in goal at the one yard right. line, and it That's ended up yard. on the 21. It's hard for me to tell you what kind of personality the team has, but I think it's got really good leadership. I think there are a couple of guys that, that have made up their minds. They're gonna, this team's going to play as well as it can every week, and and they've been all business and practice. I've never had a club that worked any harder in practice without having to be urged. There's no big heads. There's nobody walking around saying, oh, we're so great. B believe me, we know we have to get things done. We know we have to improve from today's performance if we're going to keep going and, and taking these steps as, as Ws. Although Penn State is now winning as a member of the Big Ten, after 21 Lambert trophies, 
Most fans and alumni still like to consider themselves the dominant power in the East. I would think right now going into this ball game, they will probably be the best defense we've seen up to this point. They're a much improved football team over the last year. They run better, okay, their linebackers are a little bit more physical than they were last year. So, I mean, this will be a good week for us and a really good test. Um, and obviously we should be excited for it. At home for a second straight week and before another national TV audience, the Lions look to continue to impress. The offense was getting the headlines while the defense was quietly making a statement. They hadn't given up a first quarter point in their first three contests. Finn Stewart and company again set the early tone against Rutgers, giving the ball and the momentum to Joe's offense. Kerry Collins and Bobby Engram were up to their old tricks. One-on-one -on -one coverage seemed an insult. Even pass interference wouldn't stop this combination. Setting the stage for the offensive lineman and fullback John Whitman. The give is to Whitman coming wide, lowers the head, touchdown Penn State! Back to pass is Lucas, he has time, throws the sideline to the 35-yard line, he fumbles the ball, and it's picked off by Penn State! Mark Tate and Terry Killens teamed up to give the ball back to the blue and white, where the Collins-Engram duo connected again, leaving only 22 yards and a few defenders between Kajana Carter and six points. There is a fake and a give to Carter. Carter's to the outside. They're not going to get him. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Rutgers upset hopes waved hopelessly in the air. And the Knights' defense waved at Kijana Carter. Kerry Collins gives to Carter. Carter has a hold of the right, steps a tackle. He's at the five, and at the four, the three. Touchdown! I can't believe it! What a run! Kijana lit up the packed house with his runs. There's the pitch to Carter to the short side. Cuts up field, leaps 10-5. Touchdown, Carter! Carter and Penn State weren't only making a statement to the 97,000 fans at Beaver Stadium, they were making a point for the nation to take note. 62 seconds until halftime were more than enough for Collins. There's a play action, back to pass is Kerry Collins, he's throwing deep for Engram, he's got it at the 20 yard line! He's definitely the commander of our office. Everybody looks up to him. You know, he, if something's going bad, he's like, everybody just calm down and uh, everything's going to be alright. That's what he did today. And with a little help, Kerry Collins led the offense 80 yards in eight plays, putting an exclamation point on a 34-point first half. Collins had been doing it all day, missing only two passes. Archie in the backfield, play action to Archie. Going deep for Freddie Scott, he's got it at the 45, the 50, he's at the 40, the 30, he's at the 25, he's down the sideline to the 10, the 5, Penn State touchdown! Potential was coming into fruition, but this game had a price. Temple head coach Ron Dickerson was a former assistant to Joe Paterno. And while Dickerson might have been familiar with the Penn State playbook, it couldn't have prepared him for what was to come. Here's a wide sweep to Carter. Carter's in the secondary, out across the 30, the 35, and has the first down at the 36-yard line. Carter sent the juggernaut into motion, and Kerry Collins patiently directed the attack. Paterno's forces effectively mixed the run and pass, and utilized wideout Bobby Engram to put the Lions in scoring position. It was Engram who also assisted on the touchdown. After Collins found a wide-open Kyle Brady, it was Engram that threw the block that sprang Brady into the end zone. Their combined effort put Penn State on the board first. And finally, Engram showed why he was one of the nation's top receivers. Big play action, throwing deep to Bobby Engram downfield. Engram makes the catch at the Temple 30. He's at the 20 and out of bounds at the 15-yard line. The war drums were sounding as the Lions went to the air again. Straight back to pass goes Collins. Throws over the middle, caught by Scott. Touchdown, Penn State! 
But then on what seemed to be a routine play, the hearts of Nittany Lions dropped to the pits of their stomachs. Keith Conlon over to look at him, and here comes Bobby Ingram over. He really lowered his shoulder on that and really tried to punish the defensive back. Dr. Sebastian Ellie comes out. I don't like the looks of this at all. Although the Nittany Lions controlled the scoreboard, this was a game whose effects would be felt long after the clock ran out. He dislocated his thumb and uh, they got him over. They're trying to get it back in without operating on it. Uh, but they doubt if they can, but they're trying to, to get it back in. Right? So we will really know probably until later tonight. Michigan. The showdown everyone had been waiting for. But would Kijana Carter's injury play significantly in the Nittany Lions game plan? Well, we can certainly mold it like that. What do you think? Yeah, if, I leave, if I leave this open under here, you'll be able to feel that ball against your thumb at least a little bit. But with Kijana's probability uncertain, Michigan would undoubtedly be a test. It was a test Joe and the Lions wanted. Number three versus number five. A chance to prove national dominance and establish themselves as the leader in the Big Ten. In the world of college football, it doesn't get any better. A national television audience and stadium crowd of 106,000 waited to see if Paterno and his injured Nittany Lions would measure up on this day. It didn't take long before Collins went to Carter, answering the injury question. Back to pass, a little dump to Carter. He's at the 30, the 25, to the outside to the 20. The offense would move the ball well enough to take the early lead. What people saw was an offensive line that cleared the way. A precise quarterback. There's a gift to Archie. Archie slips through. No, he's got the ball. Throws over the middle. It's complete to Freddie Scott at the 33-yard line. A balanced offensive machine. Straight back to pass goes Collin. He throws a swing to Archie. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10. That's inside at the 5 and is down at the 2. With Kerry Collins operating like a surgeon, the Lions went on top quickly. There's a pass into the end zone. Olsomer, touchdown! The quick strike of the offense had Michigan rocking. The Penn State defense also put the heat on, shutting down the Wolverines and providing more offensive opportunities. Oh, the fumble! And Penn State is recovered! Paterno thought the time was right to unleash his All-American tight end, Kyle Brady, who rambled. And then it was back to Carter. When they pitched to the short side with a lot of people there, Carter turns the corner to the 20, the 15, the 10. He's down to the 7-yard line. The mix provided enough offense to build a comfortable 16 to nothing lead with just seconds left in the half. Then the tables turned as a penalty got the Wolverines in field goal range. The first half ended, and Tyrone Wheatley suddenly got them back in the game when the second half began. There's a deep handoff to Tyrone Wheatley. He's into the secondary. He could be gone. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Tyrone Wheatley, and that's what could happen. Before the Nittany Lions could recover, it was Wheatley again. There's a pitch to Ty Wheatley, bouncing to the outside, and Penn State's knocked on their feet, off their feet, and Wheatley's going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. It was time to regroup. Bobby Ingram reversed that momentum. Terry Collins on the reverse give to Bobby Ingram, giving ground. He's at the 30, he's at the 35, he's at the 40, cuts to the outside, the 50, the 45, and down to the Michigan 40-yard line. Ben Carter picked his way downfield.
and the coaches wanted Brady again. Mixing it up, Collins went to his fullback on a fade. And here's a fake, and there's a arch to John Whitman, the fullback. But Michigan came right back, driving deep into Penn State territory. Now into the fourth quarter, the game would be tied. The Agabatuka is in for the touchdown. They conferred on the sidelines. It was getting late. They strapped it on for a must drive. And Collins looked for Engram. It's Whitman and Carter back to pass Collins. And down and out to uh, Bobby Engram, and they gave him the catch. One foot in. A sensational catch. With both sidelines maneuvering, Carter drew Penn State within striking distance. Whitman and Carter. Carter gets the handle. He's at the 40. He's at the 35. He's at the 30. He's at the 25. He's at the 15 yard line. Once the play was called, I looked at Kerry. Kerry kind of looked at me and nodded his head. And it was a and it was a tough game, and the game was on the line. I had confidence in Kerry. At the same time, he had confidence in me. He made a throw, you know, it wasn't a perfect throw, but it was a very catchable ball. And there was no way that I was gonna drop that pass. I, I didn't have time to think, I just reacted. Now the defense would have to do the job. Gelsheiser took his place on this final drive. Michigan would move into Penn State territory, forcing third and inches. The stakes clear. Penn State blitzed. Michigan lost ground. Setting up the defensive heroics that sealed the victory. They're going to pass. Here comes Willie Smith. He can't get to him. Now he throws the ball. Intercepted by Penn State. Everybody knew the Florida lost to this, this afternoon. Did you know that score of the game, and do you think you're number one at this point? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't care what happens at this point, Lynn. You know how I feel about bowls. Uh, I just want this team to keep focused, and we, you know, we got to play Ohio State coming up next, and that's got to be a tough game for us. And we just got to try to, to play well each week. And if you do that, everything seems to take care of itself. Homecoming, a beautiful fall day in Happy Valley. The largest crowd in Penn State history. Over 97,000 packed Beaver Stadium to see the number one ranked Nittany Lions square off with rival Ohio State. After last year's disappointment in Columbus, these Nittany Lions were anxious to avenge the loss. Kerry Collins took the field with a sense of purpose and went right to work rifling completions on the very first drive. Collins picked up yardage any way he could. The Buckeyes came in with a hard-hitting defense, ranked number two in the Big Ten, looking to shut down the Lions. Determination was evident. The Lions were on a mission. Now it's a gift to Carter. Carter's at the 20. He's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Pajetta Carter! 
Next, it was Brady. Gary Collins fakes, back to pass, has Kyle Brady at the 10, the 5, the 4. Kyle Brady over the middle. Ben Carter again. Pitch to Carter. Carter going toward the corner. They can't catch him. Carter, his second touchdown of the day. Joe opened the cage on leashing Bobby Ingram, who got a taste and wanted more. There's a fake to Carter. Collins looks, throws into the corner for Ingram. Touchdown! Uh, it was a great throw. He said he never saw me, but he knew where I was going to be. I, I had confidence in Kerry. I knew he was going to get it out there close to the pylon. And uh, the guy, I think they had some kind of bracket coverage that the guy was inside out. So, you know, I had to fight to get my way around him. But I, I knew that once I did, I had to get on my horse because Kerry was going to have the ball there. Coaches and teammates believe Ingram can do most anything. And they just might be right. Rolling that way is Kerry Collins. He's looking. He throws. Oh, did he catch that ball? That's the most unbelievable catch I've ever seen. It all seemed unbelievable, but all too real for the Buckeye. Here comes the pitch to Carter to the short side. He cuts back against the grain. He's at the 25, the 20, the 50. Goodbye! The show continued. Now, ringleader Collins, having introduced the Angram Act, brought out big play Mike Archie. He's got Archie. Touchdown! What a grab by Mike Archie. Big play Archie. You stick him in there and, he's, and he'll, he'll get something. He looked quick today. He was really ready to go. He, yeah, he, looked, he had a great day, I thought. Gets the handoff. He's straight ahead. He's a 10. He's a 5. He's into the end zone. Touchdown! The Buckeyes wondered what they might see next. He's back to pass. He's looking at a slant. And it's intercepted! Intercepted by Brian Miller. And it could have stayed on his feet. We might have seen six more. What they saw, they didn't like. Let's go! And they go on a delay. Oh, Car Carter's all by himself. Nobody laid a glove on him. Max, the defensive favorite, stole the show. Receivers, he's straight back to pass. It's a little screen. It's intercepted by Chris Mazik. Are you going to get it, Chris? Touchdown, Chris Mazik. Well, uh, that made me feel almost as good as when he graduated. Because I never thought he would have graduated. But if he hadn't gotten injured and it wasn't for football, he wouldn't have. And he's, he's now playing as a graduate. And uh, I, I'm delighted. I'm, I'm just delighted with everything and good that's happening to the kid. And I hope that it, this leads to other things for him. He's been... He really is a, is a he's, he, he makes coaching worthwhile. He really does, and I, and I mean that sincerely. Almost every moment in the day was worthwhile, as even the reserves got into the act of crushing the Buckeyes. Astonishingly, the Lions dropped in the media poll to number two. But Paterno was unfazed. He had never paid much attention to the polls during the season and wasn't about to start. Joe preached to the squad to stay focused. Keep your poise. Stick to your net. Paternoisms they had all heard before, but now they were starting to sink in. Joe says things sometimes, and I didn't understand it before, he used to say, I don't know if I, some of, he said, I don't know if some of you guys understand what it's going to take around you, what it's going to take each one of you to do for us to have a championship team. And I was like, what do you mean? I mean, you go out to practice, you play, you lift weights, you do whatever. And um, I didn't understand that he meant it's just, you know, giving yourself to it completely, giving a total commitment, a total effort, like every single time. And uh, even on those days, you're going to have those days where you don't feel like doing it. You just say, oh, I don't need it today. I just always go through the motions. You just can't do it. you got to dedicate yourself on each particular day. The Lions would need to take this attitude into the last stretch of their schedule, where four Big Ten opponents stood in the way of a perfect regular season. And if Penn State learned anything from its first year in the Big Ten, it's that each conference game would be a battle. play action back to pass look shows in the end zone touchdown Kyle Brady yeah well, they ran a lot of nickel and uh, whenever they run nickel it seems like they're always doubling up on Bobby and Freddie and uh, 
when that happens, some of the other guys open up, and, and, and Kyle was one of the guys that uh, you know we were able to get the ball to today because of what they were doing. So we're, we're just taking what the defense gives us in that situation. The Nittany Lion offensive line began dominating the line of scrimmage, allowing Collins the time to maneuver the offense. Collins with protection, plus the backs racing through the hole unimpeded, equals nightmares for opposing defenses. Carter worked the lanes to perfection, and when it seemed things couldn't get any worse for the Hoosiers, the Lions finished the drive the way they've been doing it all season. Pounding opposing defenses with hard-nosed running backs who aren't afraid to put their heads down. The running game not only put points on the board, it wore down the Hoosier defense. Paterno's Lions sensed this and tested its theory. It's Kajana Carter getting the handoff. Carter, he's at the 30, he's at the 35, the 40. He's at the 50. He's racing down their left sideline. He's at the 30, the 25, the 15, the 10. Penn State touchdown! While the Hoosiers capped their comeback cry with this Hail Mary in the waning seconds of the game, it was evident that Penn State planned to meet the final third of their schedule the only way they know how. Head on. Bumped up and on the road, how would the Lions counter against Simeon Rice, Dana Howard and company? Backer tough, Willie tough. This kid's a speed rusher like the Tennessee kids. Everyone expected Illinois to be a true test to Penn State's offensive strength, especially Joe. But they're all seniors. I mean, there are 11 seniors and juniors on that defensive football team. There isn't a bad football player anywhere. They're all good. That's a very fine defensive football team. That defense was ranked number one in the Big Ten and fourth in the country. The Illinois D was strong enough for head coach Lou Tepper to predict that if the Illini could score 28 points, they would win. Some anticipated this trip to Champaign might have its moments, but no one suspected the storybook tale that would be witnessed. The saga began on the first drive when the Lions turned it over and set up the Illini. Johnson to Douthert, touchdown Illinois! Moves the ball on the right side. The strange twist continued when Collins was intercepted deep in Penn State territory. Illinois added another, running straight at a stunned Penn State defense. Before the first quarter ended, Illinois had the ball again, and a horror story was unfolding. Back to pass goes Johnny Johnson, has lots of time, giving ground, giving ground, looking, throwing into the end zone to a man. Touchdown, Illinois! With their backs to the wall, Paterno looked to his offense. And the give is to Carter, going wide to the right. He turns the corner at the 10. He's at the 15 and out to the 20 for a first down. Kyle Brady was determined to pick up his teammates. To Archie. He's got Brady down the middle at the 40. He cuts back. He's at the 45. He's at the 50. He's still on his feet at the 45. Collins was back on track. Play action fake. Collins looking, throws again to Kyle Brady. Brady spins away from the tackle and gets a first down. The offense turned the game around with a 99-yard drive. And they go to Mill, and Mill is into the end zone. Penn State touchdown, Brian Mill. With momentum shifting, the coaches went for the jugular. No, fake reverse, throwing deep to Freddie him. Scott. He's down there, touchdown, Penn State! The deficit was slowly being cut down by a relentless offense. Maintaining its poise, Penn State had pulled to within seven midway through the third. Johnny Johnson is a give on the reverse action to Douther. Douther's being chased by Dingle. He turns the corner at the 40s to the 45 first down in Penn State territory. 
To come from behind story would take another twist as Illinois drove the ball to a first and goal. Touchdown might be too much this late. The defense held it to a field goal. The time was running out. Penn State was down 10 with only 10 minutes left. Driving into Illinois territory, Penn State faced a fourth and two. Paterno said go, producing the first of several do or die scenarios. You gotta throw it, Terry. Throws complete to Bobby Ingram. He breaks the tackle at the 20. He's at the 15 yard line. My goodness. Setting up one of the story's heroes. There's a give straight ahead to Mill. Touchdown, Penn State! With time running out, Penn State needed the ball. The defense faced the next do-or-die situation. And in motion goes the wing back left, and he turns around and comes back right. And straight back to pass goes Johnson. Three-man rush for Penn State. He dumps it off to Douthert, and he's dumped for a loss back at the 27-yard line. They responded with a three-and-out series, forcing Illinois to give up the ball. But yet another twist awaits punt with the wind is a high spiral. Oh, it's going to go over Mike Archie's head. He's going to let it hit, and it's rolling all the way down to the five-yard line inside the five at the four. Now, all that stood in the way was the number one rated defense. 96 yards, a stiff wind, light rain, and a ticking clock. Any mistake would end. And there's a pass complete to Kyle Brady for the first down at the 18-yard line. The Illinois defense dug in, grudgingly giving up yardage. But Penn State patiently moves upfield. They get to Carter on the counter. He breaks the tie. He's at the 50. He's at the 45 and has a first down inside the 45 in Illinois territory. With full confidence in its offense, the coaches used all their weapons. There would be no tomorrow. Play action, back to pass. Kyle, the carry Collins, throws. It's complete at the 18-yard line. Ever determined, with the rain still in their face, they could now see the end. Collins approached the ball with confidence. Split set in the backfield, Milne and Carter. Single coverage on Ingram. Gary Collins looks, 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 throws over the middle, caught by Ingram at the 10-yard line. 90 yards later and now with a minute left, it came down to a nose-to-nose -nose confrontation. They got Kajana Carter on the wing left and in motion to the right, and they give to Milne. Touchdown, Penn State! Yes, sir! Never in doubt! Motion, they followed him a little bit. Hey, Brian Mill has become a complete football player. The saga in Champaign wasn't over yet. It squeezed out even more drama when Illinois drove back. Four-man rush for Penn State. They're going to throw a screen to Douthard. It's to the left side. He breaks one tackle, gallops for another, and is still on his feet out to the 41-yard line with the clock stopped now that the chains will be moved. They got a big run. run. Yeah. Two timeouts. Good call, though. Now both sides desperately clinging to their hopes. He's fading back to pass. He's looking. He's throwing over the middle. It's caught for a first down at the 46-yard line in Penn State territory by Jasper Strong. It came to one last play in this bizarre drama. He got to put three wide outs. Right. Same, same uh, offensive and formation. they're going to throw it up to Grant. Now, somebody has to just be there to knock that ball down. Can't give him too much time. And they're, they're coming. coming, they're coming. Willie Smith's after him. He's throwing into the end zone. Intercepted! Penn State wins the ball game! Kim Herring picked it off! California! Here we come! He's 
it again. <laughs> I mean, I've been saying it all year that, uh, you know, our, this team's different than all the other teams. You know, we stuck together, and then we hung in there. We were down 21 points, and, and you know, we we said, you know, hey, let's get one at a time. We never lost faith, and, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's, it was a good lesson that we learned today to, to never quit, and, and that's a good lesson we can take on into life. With only two games left in the regular season, Penn State needed to stay sharp. No mental errors. Hey, Chris, your head's down when you're making your break. Get that head right inside and go. Get this dirt. Check 35 fire. What? Fight for your life. Come on. It's a sprint out. Five steps, Trap. Five steps. Five steps. Boom. After two grueling road tests, the Lions were ready to return to the safe confines of Beaver Stadium. That's not, they have a new man in there, the ball is loose, it's picked up by Penn State, and off and running is Tim Herring, he's at the 50, he's at the 45, the 40, he's at the 30, he may go all the way, he does go all the way! Herring would give the 90,000-plus partisans much more to cheer about on this afternoon. Three wide receivers this time. Schnurr straight back to pass. Atkins from behind. He throws the ball. Intercepted by Jim Herring. He's off to the races again, and he's dragged down at the 45-yard line. Of course, when the Lion offense is given such good field position. Back to pass Collins. Middle screen to Ingram. 45. He's at the 40. He's at the 35. Goodbye, Bobby. Touchdown, Penn State. Perfectly executed. The blue and white defense continued to claw at the Wildcats' passing attack. Play action back to pass. Willie Smith is blitzing. Intercepted by Scioli. Scioli's still on his feet trying to cut back. He's all the way down to the 15-yard line. The opportunistic defensive unit coupled with the high-powered Lion offense was a very dangerous combination, scoring on almost all of the defensive takeaways. And here's Carter on the give, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. They haven't stopped him yet. With a stable full of tough, thoroughbred running backs to choose from, the Lions' strategy on this drive was simple. Run at the Wildcats. Run around the Wildcats. And finally, run through the Wildcats. They give to Milne a pop right straight ahead into the end zone. Touchdown! Gary Collins and company wanted a piece of the action, too. And throw down the middle, cut by Scott at the 46-yard line. And when the wide receivers had enough, Collins went back to the running backs. There's that middle screen of Archie. Archie's on his 30, he's at the 25, still on his feet at the 23-yard line. And then Carter finished off another vintage Penn State scoring drive. As he get to Carter up the middle, Carter's at the 20, he comes to the outside, the 15, the 10, stiff arm, touchdown! What a run! One game left. Only the Michigan State Spartans were in the path of an undefeated season. For the seniors, Michigan State was more than just a game. It would be the last time they would hear the roar of the crowd as they ran out of the south end zone. The last time they would wear the blue and white in Beaver Stadium.
It had been 15 years since a Big Ten team had gone undefeated. And now only Michigan State stood in the Lions' way. But the Spartans' emotions were running high. They were playing their last game under head coach George Perlis. And they wanted nothing more than to see their coach go out a winner. But the Nittany Lions, particularly the seniors, were fueled with the notion of going 11-0. And there is a play-action fake to Carter, and Collins throws complete to Brady at the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, the 20, and he's cut from behind and banged out at the 10-yard line. Brady's rumble down the sideline gave the Spartans their first taste of the number one offense in the country. Yajana Carter provided the appetizer that put the Lions on the board early. Then the Deuce provided the main course. There's a pitch to the wide side. Archie's going to pass. He's got Bobby Ingram downfield. Ingram makes the catch at the 25. Makes two 10 miss. He's at the 10 to 5. Touchdown! Bobby Ingram! Both head coaches sensed the shift in the momentum of the game as Penn State again turned to its vaunted rushing attack. The drive culminated when Carter and Brian Milne switched positions, with Carter leading the way into the hole. And here goes Milne, airborne, into the end zone. Everyone in packed Beaver Stadium knew the Lions were on a roll and coming back for more. The blue and white turned to the offensive line. Greeley, Hardy. Rivera, Conlon, and Johnson to provide the holes. As they had done all season, they opened the lanes and the running backs drove into pay dirt. The lanes were open, the ride was free, and Carter drove untouched into the end zone. Kajana Carter standing up. Nobody laid a glove on him. Back to pass goes Kerry Collins, looking, looking, throwing, complete to Bobby Ingram, who came back to get the ball. Collins took control, and Carter finished behind the steamrolling offensive line. Carter. Touchdown, Carter! As the fourth quarter approached, the Lions raised their hands to the crowd. Like all great teams, the fourth quarter was theirs. This is the time when a team's will is tested, and no team in college football was stronger in the final 15 minutes than Penn State. Kajana Carter has the ball, he's at the 20, 15, 10, down to the one-yard line! From the one-yard line, everyone knew who would get the ball. Twice the Lions had scored from here with a short side trap, and they dared the Spartans to try and stop them one more time. No back in the country was hotter than Kijana Carter. Lance's turn to shine. 41 yard line back to pass is Banks. Here comes Jason Collins. He eludes him. He's got time. He's been. No, he's still not caught. Unbelievable. Fumbles the ball. He's down. Penn State recovers. Immediately, Collins let it all hang out. I actually grabbed Franny Ganner after we got the turnover, and I said, and I called a play. I looked him right in the eye, and I said, well, this is what we're running. He goes, okay. Chris Campbell is the wide receiver right. Collins back to pass. Going deep. He's got a man down there. It's caught. Touchdown! For months, the Lions shied away from commenting about the polls. They believed the scoreboard did their talking for them. But today, they let it be known who they thought was the nation's best team and showed the national television audience a very special tailback. Kajana Carter! Look out, Heisman, here we go! 227 yards for Kajana Carter and five touchdowns on a 58-yard jaunt. My name is Mike Ward, I'm president of Pasadena Tournament of Roses, uh -oh. and it is my pleasure to formally invite you yeah. to Pasadena, January 2nd. Yes. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in.
Paterno. Well, on behalf of this team, uh, one of the greatest teams I've ever been around, if not the greatest. I Woo! We, yeah, we, we appreciate it. We're going to go out to Pasadena. We're going to play well and make you very proud. That's why I came here, because I knew what kind of people that they were recruiting, and we knew, and I, we, I knew we had a top, one of the top classes in the country, you know, that year, and, and we all said before we leave here, we're going to go undefeated. You kind of realize that you are part of history, uh, but it hasn't really sunk in yet. Maybe tomorrow morning it'll all sink in, and, and a couple guys have, have run up to me and said, you know, you know, we've done it. We've, we've done something that just hasn't happened that many times around here, and I was just like, yeah. And, you know, it's here it's kind of expected. We've always expected since the day I walked in here, we've always expected to be 11-0 at the end of the season. It hasn't hit me yet we're 11-0, but, I mean, I'm sure it will. And, you know, that's something that not too many teams have ever done. I'm, you know, gone undefeated and untied the regular season. And, I mean, it's something special, and this is a special group, and I think we deserve it. I, mean, I think we enjoy playing, and, and the guys came ready to play week in and week out. And, and I wish we could play 11 more games, to be honest with you. When you get a team like this, with this kind of talent, this kind of you know, closeness, you, don't, you really don't want to let go of anybody. I just feel right now, as I did throughout from game one, even from practice one, that we had something special here and that we're going to hang together and find ways to win, and we've done that. And uh, Right now, I, I feel this, this is probably the best bunch of guys I've ever known in my life. I have a funny feeling we're going to be much like the other undefeated teams around here and stay very close for years to come. These Nittany Lions will take a prominent place in the proud tradition of Penn State football. Undefeated, a Rose Bowl, a shot at a national championship. What made this Penn State team so special? They certainly had great leadership and talent, an offensive unit that was both explosive and reliable, a defense that delivered when it had to. But the reason this team will take a place of honor is because they became a team, working together, believing in their coaches, trusting in each other. And that is a greater accomplishment. That epitomizes Penn State football. Uh, this is the proudest moment of my life, you know. I always dreamed about winning national championships, what it was like going undefeated. I've never been on an undefeated team. You know, we accomplished that, went to the Rose Bowl. I mean, we all stuck together, pulled it out. Uh -huh. Knew it since day one, since we got in, came in in August and worked at it and worked at it, and this is the result. It's unbelievable. It's like, you know, you got like 130 brothers on this team. I mean, everyone gets these guys. Love all of them, you know, all the hard work they put in this season. Life. These guys just came together, you know, when things were tough all year, this team did whatever it took to win. We just got close, and uh, this, is a, this is a family here. This is a family. Never gave up, never quit. That's the character of this ball club. to Carter. Carter going toward the corner. They can't catch it. Touchdown! Back to pass to Curry Collins. First pass of the game. He's got Archie in the end zone. Yes! Touchdown! Play action to Archie. Going deep for Freddie Scott. He's got it at the 45, the 50. He's at the 40, the 30. He's at the 25. He's down the sideline to the 10, the 5. Penn State touchdown! Back to pass is Lucas. He has time. Throws the sideline to the 35-yard line, and it's picked off by Penn State. Takes the pullback. Get to Archie. Got a hole. What a move! At the 30, the 25, the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! And Larry Lucas is back to pass, and Atkins is after him, and Vinnie Stewart has him. 
We have a lot of guys that have played a lot of football, and I think uh, the maturity just showed in the way our defense played the whole game today. As long as we take care of what we're doing and, and do the things that we can do, uh, we, we, can, we think we can be successful against anyone. Right now, we're, we're on a roll. You know, we got a lot of momentum, and everything was going right for us. So you know, hopefully, we can keep on going. But yeah, I, I think you know everything is starting to fall in place. You know, going into Michigan, we're going up into their their stadium, and uh, you know, it's my first time up there, so I think we're all going to be excited. We did have a good game, but there's, there's still we still have big amounts to climb. It's a halfback pass. He's got Brady Scott downfield. Brady Scott makes the catch at the ten, the five, touchdown! Michigan and Penn State boil it down. Who wins? Okay, Penn State is five and zero, oh, and they've been that way for the last two years. The reason why they load up early against teams they can beat. They don't beat tough teams. Michigan is the toughest team they play this year. That's why I like Michigan in the Big House to beat Penn State. Penn State is the top scoring team in the nation. They have great firepower. They're having the chance to play against a great Michigan team that should be undefeated. It is their way of showing how good they are. I think Penn State squeaks it out. The snap, the set, the kick, it's good. There's a pass into the end zone. Olsen, touchdown! The ball is snapped, the ball is set, the ball is kicked. The ball is true! And Penn State takes a 16 to nothing lead. The snap is good this time. The kick is up. And the kick is good. He's into the secondary. He can be gone. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! There's a pitch to Ty Wheatley. Bouncing to the outside. And Wheatley's going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. He goes in motion. Collins straight back up over the middle. He's got Dagram touchdown! down should be to get the ball out and get some running room. The John Carter and Brian Milne are the setbacks, two tight ends, and the give is to Carter, and Carter comes wide right and gets nowhere. And back to pass is Kerry Collins. He's looking, looking, dumps it off to Milne at the 10-yard line, and he's out to the 11. And there's a pass complete to Kyle Brady for the first down at the 18-yard line. Yeah, what's the punch pass play? again? And Juan Patton. Makes the defensive play. First was, and 10 Penn State. That was the play they wanted, Fran. Now they'll open it up. Kajana Carter is back in a tailback. There's a quick spot pass of Bobby Ingram to the left. He spins away from a tackler and gets close to the first down at the 29. They're out to the 44, making up 40 of those 96 yards. Back to pass is Kerry Collins. He throws. It's complete to Kajana Carter at the 49-yard line for a 9-yard gain. Second down, five, the backs in the knife formation. Brian Millen, Kajana Carter. The they counter. get the Carter on the counter. He breaks the tie. He's at the 50. He's at the 45 and has a first down inside the 45 in Illinois territory. Kyle Brady is the tight right end. Straight ahead give to 
Ryan Milne, the fullback. And in comes Mike Archie at the tailback position. There's a fake to Archie. A throw complete to Kyle Brady. Kyle Brady struggling for the first down. Gets inside the 35. It's going to be very close to a first down. Carter gets the call. Bounces to the outside and lunges for what should be a first down. It'll depend on the spot. Terry Collins throws. It's complete at the 18-yard line. Terry Collins looks, looks, looks. Throws over the middle. Caught by Ingram at the 10-yard line. Mike Archie now in the backfield. Gives to Mill. Mill is barreling inside the five. He's to the two-yard line. Brian Mill first and goal. If they can put it in for the touchdown and win, you just saw a great offensive football team reach down into their gut for 95 yards in the clutch. They got Kajana Carter on the wing left and in motion to the right, and they give to Mill. Touchdown, Penn State! Yes, sir! Never a doubt! He's going to pass. He's got Bobby Ingram downfield. Ingram makes the catch at the 25. Makes 2 10 miss. He's at the 10 to 5. Touchdown! Chris Campbell is the wide receiver right. Collins back to pass. Going deep. He's got a man down there. It's caught. Touchdown! We didn't get much respect from anybody. Started off the season, picked to finish fifth in the Big Ten, came through, and right now we're 12-0. We're There's a lot, a lot to do with pride. My whole life I dreamed about going 12-0, and, and I came when I came to Penn State, I knew we could do it. Since the Citrus Bowl last year, we decided we were going to do it. We did it. We came in here with 12-0 now. You just got to love it. You know, everybody's happy now. Just look around. You know, everybody's just hugging each other. You know, there's not a lot of teams that could, you know, go 12-0 and, and win the national championship. <laughs> well, we did it. The Big Ten Championship, an undefeated season brought its rewards, the trip to Pasadena, and all that California has to offer. It's definitely a great reward for all the hard work and sacrifice we put into the, to the winter conditioning and, and the summer. Perhaps no one could anticipate the attention and the media hype surrounding the granddaddy of them all. State fans from across the nation converged in Southern California to rally around their team. Let me say this to you. It's one, it's one year to this day, and it will be one year and one day tomorrow, 
that this team made up his mind it was going to be something special. It's going to be something special on the field, off the field, and everything they did. They were going to be unique. They were going to be close. They were going to work harder than the other guy. They were going to work as hard as it was going to take to be the best football team they could possibly be. And they have done that. And you ought to be proud of that. And I know you They have done everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything that we have asked them to do to get themselves ready for this day tomorrow. All right? We are ready. And we've been working on it for one year. The work was complete. Game day had finally arrived. The season's long journey reached its destination. Arriving undefeated, these occupants had extended the legend of one of America's most unique football programs. Powerhouse from back east was a curiosity in the California sun. Those generic white uniforms with no names. The no-nonsense approach to football. The dangerous offensive weapons showcased all year by the networks. Now, focusing on the last mission. This big statue up front, you guys see it, they engraved the winners on that on that monument out there, okay, in the Hall of Fame champion. You come back here years from now, you want to have your name on the first line, right? Everybody, everybody protect the rock, all right? Everybody do what we got to do, let's go, come on. All the hype and excitement gave way. It was time to put it on the line. Penn State's royal families picked out their favorite sons and Nittany Lion Faithful took their place. The Run for the Roses, a year-long mission, had reached the doorstep. It was Rose Bowl time. The first sign these ducks might be mighty came early. That's O'Neal, straight and deep drop, guns it over the middle, has a man complete to the first down marker to the tight end, Josh Wilcox. It would take helmet popping hits by Penn State's defense to stop them. And when they did, Paterno sent out the offense, who brought Penn State fans to their feet the very first time they touched the ball. Toss it to Carter, the motion for the same side. Carter hit, breaks, tackles, 20, 30, he's gone. Goodbye to the 40, 50, all the way down the middle. Kajana Carter, 84 yards for the score. Penn State on the board. Too strong. That offensive line at Penn State, a huge hole. You or I could have run through that. We wouldn't have gotten all the way down for 84 yards score, but we could have certainly run through that hole. Good job of blocking over there by the Nittany Lions. Kajana Carter. Fought off the first would-be tackler, bounced off him, right up the gut, 84 yards and a score. Nice job by that offensive line. The offensive line popped a hole, Carter bounced off a tackler and carried it straight home. The quick start had Penn Staters going wild and thinking Rob, but Oregon had other ideas. to throw on first down is O'Neal. Pump fake going deep. He's got a man wide over the tight end to the five. Is he in? He's knocked out of bounds to the one. Josh Wilcox. The Ducks bounce right back. Can they get it in? Play fake going for the tight end. Wilcox wide open. He's there. Touchdown, Oregon. The turno paced while the defense adjusted to Oregon's scheme and began solving the puzzle. 
first with a reserve safety, Chuck Penzenic. Neal, deep drop, firing it over the middle and putting it up for grabs and it's picked off by Penzenic. He's got it at the 10, coming up the middle of the 20. In the second quarter, Penn State's defense began to dominate. They're in the eye to play fake. O'Neal in trouble, back to pass, looks over the far side. The defense was determined. Perhaps sensing they needed to step up, they began taking control, chasing Oregon off the field, getting the ball in the hands of the offense. Picking up their game, the offense responded, moving the ball with consistency. The huddles looked intense, and the line provided ample time for Collins, who began dissecting the Oregon secondary with passes underneath. Collins back to throw with time, rifles it over the middle, it's complete. He had all the time in the world. Setting up the long one to another young player who would make a Rose Bowl contribution. Two wide receivers to each side. Archie, the only one in the backfield, a deep drop for Kerry Collins with time. Goes for the home run, down the far side, has his man complete to the five, down to the two, Joe Jerovicius. First and goal inside the two, and he beat Herman O'Berry. Talk about uh, the scouting report, Jervicious picks up 43 yards on only his second catch of 1994. With John Whitman leading the way, Brian Milne would get it done. They give over to the left side, Mills in, touchdown Penn State, the Nittany Lions take the lead. Nothing fancy, you hand it to the big guy, runs in behind the bigger guy, the good lead block, Mill takes it, picks up his ninth touchdown this season, rushing for the Nittany Lions on a one-yard run. Momentum had clearly swung their way, and Penn State fans celebrated its arrival. But once again, the Ducks would not relent. Wide side of the field for Danny O'Neill. He's dropping back to his row. Pressure comes from the outside, looks over the middle, guns over the middle. He's got his man there. It's complete inside the 40, taking it in Pat Johnson, the true freshman. To stop a last minute drive before halftime. As they would all day, Penn State gave ground between the 30s, but then got real stingy. With its back to the wall, the defense held off a furious drive, leaving Oregon empty-handed for its efforts. McLemore in motion, O'Neill back to pass. Looking over the right side, fires. Man is there, it's McLemore, and he is going to go down to the five, and that's the end of the half. Oh, not a good That play. is the end of the half. Not a smart The play. Oregon Ducks not playing it smart at the end of the half. Needed to throw into the end zone, could not throw it underneath, and did exactly that. A surprising first half would require Penn State coaches to make halftime adjustments to stay in control of this Rose Bowl and a perfect season. A Rose Bowl experience includes the glamour of Tinseltown. Penn State players were featured at a Hollywood-style Champions Banquet as celebrities themselves, the West Coast Bowl rewarding their efforts. The 4 and this is a great place to be. We stayed at the uh, Waterfront Hilton right on Huntington Beach. A lot of the guys were able to walk out onto the uh, Huntington Pier, to the famous pier because that's where they have all the uh, world champion surfing contests. We went to Disneyland, that was nice, and uh, Universal Studios was a was a great tour. We wanted a couple clothes, you know, going out. It's pretty nice to have VIP treatment. I mean, you can't get no better than that. Being a part of the Penn State program has given me a chance to see parts of the country that I never would have been able to see. What the Penn State program saw in the first half was a hyperactive Oregon defense and a determined offense. And heading into the second half, 
the Nittany Lions still had a job to get done. The 102,000 Rose Bowl fans settled in to anticipate the second half strategies as Penn State took the upper hand. Halftime adjustments shut off the middle and destroyed Oregon's passing game. Halftime chalk talks also had the offense and Kyle Brady in gear. Freddie Scott and Collins began hooking up. And Mike Archie got into the act. The offense was hitting on all cylinders. But with five and a half minutes remaining in the period, Oregon found the end zone. With the two wide receivers set, they're both on the wide side of the field to play. Fake O'Neal with pressure, goes into the corner of the end zone, looking for a receiver. He's got him out of the goal line. It's Christian McLemore, touchdown, Oregon! Now tied at 14, Paterno knew what had to be done. And yet another sophomore stepped up. And Belden kicks it away. Down the middle it goes. It'll be Ambrose Fletcher from the 7. Up the left side of the 10, 15, 20. Breaks it to the 30. Gets outside. Beats the place kicker to the 40. To the 50. A foot race down the far side. They'll catch up with him at the 30 and knock him down from behind. Running him down Isaac Walker. The cornerback. And what a return by Ambrose Fletcher. All the way down the 21. 72 yards on the kickoff return. That's his longest. Fletcher has returned eight kickoffs this year for an average of 21 yards, his longest being 29. A fine job, though. A good job by the wedge of Penn State, too. The offense knew it needed this one and patiently drove toward the end zone. Eventually, setting up a gaping hole on the left side for Kajana to romp through untouched. Second and six, give to Carter, huge hole, left side, he's gone to the 15-10-5, touchdown Kajana Carter. Little misdirection for 17 yards of the score. Little delayed draw, the quarterback Collins kind of half rolls to his right, hands back to the inside, gives it to Kajana Carter. Good blocking up front on the left side of that offensive line, a huge hole. He shoots through, he didn't take three steps past his offensive line, and there was nobody there. After crushing the linebacker, filling the gap, Keith Conlon celebrated with Carter in the end zone, and the tide finally turned. The defense would allow penetration, but had Oregon just missing while keeping the ball in the 40. They're in the eye. Play fake. O'Neal with time. Guns it over the middle, and it's picked off. Picked off by Penzetic, his second pick. Coming over to the near side of the 50, 45, 40. Breaks a tackle down the sideline to the 30. Has blockers now to the 20, 15, and he's run out of bounds at the 13. He was playing deep center field. Chuck Penzetic, the safety, with his second interception of the contest, a 45-yard return. It was time to put the game away, and the offense went about its business. First and goal, Carter, left side, cracks it inside. Is he in? Yes, touchdown, Penn State. Again, nothing fancy, just a little flip out there, a little sweep, and I'll tell you what, the offensive line on the left side for Penn State, they just blew everybody back into that yellow or gold painted end zone of Oregon and then Kajana Carter, three yards, touchdown. Everyone sensed the possibility. At this point, the perfect season was within their grasp. Perhaps the Ducks were finished. The defense would make sure, cutting off any opportunity of a comeback. Injured and overshadowed all year. They would deliver when needed in this Rose Bowl. Senior linebackers Phil Yaboa Cody, number 43, and Willie Smith, number 52, kept relentless pressure on the Ducks.
Terry Killen's charge to the quarterback broke up another pass before it began. By nightfall, the Nittany Lions had their way. First and ten, Penn State. Now can they chew up the rest of the clock? 7.40 and counting. They give it up the middle to Archie. He's into the secondary. 45-40. He's all the way down to the 35, making the 34. First and ten, Nittany Lions. moving the ball at will and taking points as they came the end was in sight snap is back and down clean exchange there it's up it's on its way and it's good Penn State leads it by that magical number of 17 the game was getting out of reach for all of them and the perfect season closer for Penn State. The pursuit continued to be relentless. The approval is intense. Here comes the blitz. O'Neill has spun around and dropped. Yaboa Cody again from the outside, untouched. He went right around the tackle to the near side. One last drive would end it. The drive would be the 84th scoring drive of an unforgettable season. Second and six at the nine. Archie the tailback. They'll give it to the fullback. Weaves his way up the middle. It's Whitman all the way inside the five, and they give him the touchdown. A year in which Penn State would reach the end zone 76 times and score 312 more points than their opponents. driving their fans into a frenzy. A year in which its defense would tough it out and hang together, doing what it took to get the job done. A year in which its offense simply ran away from its opponents. When the victory became clear, reality sunk in. They were unbeatable. Michigan and Ohio State back to back. The miracle finish at Illinois. They took on all that came their way. Now a Rose Bowl. Finally, relief. Time to celebrate. Their faithful fans erupted. The networks wanted to hear more. I'm glad we won for Penn State, and I'm glad we won for the Big Ten. But more importantly, I thought it was a great college football game, and I think college football won today. Sounds like to me, Joe, that you believe in your heart that this is the best team in the country. Well, I... There are a few hundred... A few thousand people here who voice their opinion, Joe. Well, I, I think I'll have to agree with them.
That stadium was an exciting place to be in today as a coach. Uh, and, and all the things leading up to this whole thing. Hold on. Very exciting. Hold on. Right, we, we, no, hold up questions for a second. We've got a little presentation to make. Stand up, Ray. Stand up. What are you characters? Ray, stand up. Stand up, Ray. Stand up, Ray. I got rid of all of you. Let's go to the winningest ball coach. Get down. Get down. No. The winningest ball coach in the history of college football. He's won all four major bowls. He's been an inspiration to myself, to the rest of the team and national championship coach this year. These are the greatest guys I've ever been around. I just want you to know that.